so heavy here now. Ruination on the mindless beaches. for the most metal concert in the history of the world. Is that a rhetorical question? With the demon-rousing riffs of Eddie Munson's Master of Puppets performance in Stranger Things still fresh in our social feeds, the timing could not be more ideal for Metal Hellsinger to strut out onto the main stage and adopt an imposing power stance. Taking the love affair between doom and heavy metal music and melding it into an official marriage, Metal Hellsinger's rhythm-based rampage through the fiery depths of hell had me gleefully headbanging along to every heathen-seeking headshot. I couldn't help but be slightly disappointed though that much like the ethos of the musical genre that powers it, Metal Hellsinger is here for a good time rather than a long time. And when I rolled credits after roughly four hours of play, I was left with the impression that while it's undeniably heavy with metal, it's also surprisingly light on features and content. Metal Hellsinger's story is fairly slight, and what little plot there is, is mainly delivered by ubiquitous voice actor Troy Baker's narration in between levels. Hell of a night for a story, ain't it? Baker is doing his best Sam Elliott-style southern drawl as he describes our character, a lost soul known as the Unknown who must blaze a bloody trail of vengeance through eight levels of hell, culminating in a high-stakes showdown with the Red Judge, who's better known as... The Devil, with a capital D. I found much of the underworld imagery used in these story cutscenes to be quite striking, like gatefold album covers come to life. But Baker's accompanying monologues are perhaps a touch too serious in tone. I'm not suggesting he needed to match Jack Black's buffoonery from Brutal Legend, but a few jokes here and there could have provided a welcome counterbalance to the steady stretches of demon decimation. Hell 101. Lie, but don't lie to the judge. Each level is accompanied by an original metal song, and there's a nice blend of styles that range from infectiously melodic anthems to higher intensity cookie monster meltdowns. Its track list is uniformly modern sounding though, so old school fans hoping for slabs of Sabbath style classic metal or early 80s thrash will be left shaking their heads instead of banging them. No stairway. Denied. Still, while there's nothing here that's going to knock Mick Gordon's rip and tear out of the number one spot in my Music to Murder Demons 2 playlist on Spotify, there are some standout vocal performances from contemporary metal maestros like Trivium's Matt Heafy and Serge Tankian from System of a Down that had me moshing along like I was in the passenger seat of the Mirthmobile. Unlike Doom or Doom Eternal, Metal Hellsinger's bone-crushing musical accompaniments aren't just there to accentuate your assaults, but rather they serve as your conductor in this symphony of destruction. Timing your attacks with the double-kicked drum beats increases your fury multiplier, and the longer you can maintain a sequence of perfectly timed hits, the more powerful your attacks become, and the more points you rack up. Additionally, the soundtrack, which opens each level stripped to its barest elements, 
slowly introduces new layers of instrumentation as you continue your killing streak, until the vocals kick in with your fury maxed and the full song is revealed in all its teeth rattling glory. It provides an exhilarating crescendo to the carnage, and keeping the performance cranked up to 11 demands a challenging combination of rhythm and first-person shooter reflexes that had me hooked throughout each head-splitting serving of Kill Spree Karaoke. Enemy waves are strategically staggered throughout each level to maintain your murderous momentum. Standing in for Doom's imps are marionettes, weak grunts usually found in groups to be dispatched in a quick succession of finishing moves that replenish your health and keep your combo chain going. In each arena, it's always good to try and keep a few of these wicked weaklings around for when you need to quickly get back on tempo, since there's a motley crew of more powerful monsters hell-bent on upsetting your rhythm. Figuring out which threat to prioritize is paramount, and Metal Hellsinger successfully shuffled its lineup to keep me constantly on my toes. Well, when I wasn't tapping them along to the music. There is, however, a lot of room for improvement in Metal Hellsinger's weapons arsenal, which isn't quite as extensive as its enemy types. On top of the default sword for melee attacks and a skull that fires underpowered projectiles, you can equip a primary and secondary weapon from a fairly limited range of just four options. Since every weapon has unlimited ammo, I basically went with a balance of the dual-wielded pistols for accurate range shots and the shotgun for its crowd-controlling spray and effectively kept that loadout for the majority of Metal Hellsinger's campaign. While they each have a special secondary attack that can be charged up, there are no upgrades or modifications to be made, so my first shot fired with each weapon was identical to my last. It's a shame that Metal Hellsinger's hot lead slinging doesn't adapt as dynamically as its heavy metal singing. Conquering each of the eight hells unlocks additional challenges called Torments. These are optional arena fights that shake things up with some appropriately devilish twists. Like randomly switching your weapon after each kill, forcing you to frantically adapt your combat strategy on the fly. There are three of these torments per level and I'm having fun working my way through them, and the successful completion of them earns you sigils that can be equipped in the main levels. These sigils don't particularly change how you play and aren't really required in order to beat the campaign. However, acquiring them is certainly mandatory for anyone serious about scaling Metal Hellsinger's high score leaderboards, since they grant you valuable buffs that are crucial if you want the maximum reward for each rhythmically slaughtered horde. I wish I was personally more invested in striving for high score supremacy though, because there's otherwise not much of an incentive to replay Metal Hellsinger's string of short-lived slaygrounds. The songs may be unique to each setting, but while the environments themselves are lavishly rendered, they're also structurally similar, and your double jump and dash abilities are fairly stock standard compared to the more hypermobile movement offered in Doom Eternal. Since Metal Hellsinger is all about maintaining forward momentum, its levels are also extremely linear and seemingly lacking in secrets or collectibles to find, other than the odd fury boosting pickup. It's also disappointing that, aside from a spectacular final boss encounter, Every end-level boss is just a slight variation on the same winged demon design. Their attacks differ, but your method for killing them is consistent, which means they are impressive to encounter at first, but grow increasingly stale with each subsequent appearance. I wish there'd been a different Hellborn headliner waiting to bring the curtain down on each groove-heavy gauntlet run. After all, Raining Blood is one of the greatest closing tracks in heavy metal history, but I wouldn't want absolutely every Slayer album to end with it. Metal Hellslinger is an enjoyably rhythmic riff on the metal-propelled mayhem of modern Doom, but its short length and modest variety in weapons and boss fights means it feels more like an energetic but unfinished collection of garage demos than a fully fleshed out album. Hell-raising high score chases will no doubt get the most mileage out of replaying the eight story missions, but it falls short of id Software's heavy metal masterpiece when it comes to providing a truly meaty first-person shooter campaign and the absence of any other major modes or multiplayer makes it feel a bit on the slim side when compared to similarly priced games. As a result, Metal Hellsinger might not be the greatest demon slaying shoot 'em up in the world, but it's certainly a stirring tribute. For more IGN reviews, check out our verdicts on Splatoon 3's single player and Beyond the Wire, and for everything else, stick with IGN.
After years of work, a group of scientists managed to tap into the Noosphere, the Earth's informational field. An achievement comparable at best to the conquest of space. Don't want the innocent to suffer? Then help me find the culprit. And who the fuck are you? And what do we have a decade later? The zone in our image after our likeness. Still lying out there, and I can't even bury them. Died in an anomaly, shot by loners, found with a stone around his neck, thrown off a cliff, torn apart by dogs. You cannot kill God, just like you cannot get rid of the sky up above. I am blind, but it is you who cannot see. Hi, my name is Zach, and I'm in charge of PR at GSC Game World. We made the original Stalker trilogy, and now we are developing Stalker 2. The 23rd of March marked the anniversary of the first game in the series, Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. Celebrating the date, last year we released the first in-engine screenshot of Stalker 2, followed by the first trailer and the gameplay teaser. That was our way to celebrate 25 years of making games here at GC Game World. This year we have an anniversary gift for our fans as well. It's an update on Stalker 2. It's not as big as a new trailer just yet, but we hope you will enjoy it. Let's start with something familiar, yet completely renewed. And here is the first look at the updated costumes. The zone is a dangerous place so it's filled with different factions. The Freedom and the Duty are two iconic opposing forces. The first ones see the zone as a free, ever-growing state, while the second ones would eagerly sacrifice their lives to prevent its spreading. These ideologies will never meet the agreement. As you may have guessed, you will see them in the sequel. The recognizable design for each faction has been enriched with details. If you look closely, you can see scuffs, scratches and sticking out threads. Please keep in mind, the models are still work in progress. The time has passed and the new forces emerged in the zone. You can expect to see more factions in Stalker 2. Let's move on. The reception of Stalker 2 has been extremely positive so far, and we are truly grateful for that. Thank you for your passion and your interest. Stalker 2 is a shooter game, and you can't imagine it without the guns, right? Here are a couple of guns you will see in the game. The arsenal will include more than 30 different weapons. Of course, there will be lots of modifications for each gun.
Finally, let's finish with something completely unexpected. We work a lot to fill the world with a decent amount of memorable details. And sometimes it takes us to completely unexpected grounds. Can you see this guy? Quite a charmer, if you ask me. But let's take a closer look at his teeth. And the tooth is gone. Or changed or replaced with a dental crown. All made with our custom teeth tool, one of the many plugins we use in the development process for specific changes like that. These tiny accents ensure each character looks completely unique. Literally every human in Stalker 2 has one-of-a-kind smile. Or green, I suppose. And that covers up our news for today. Please subscribe to our official social channels to receive up-to-date info about the game or ask any questions. We would be pleased to share more about Stalker 2, including gameplay demonstration, later this year. Until then, good hunting, Stalkers! I know you may not want to be here, but sometimes we get a chance to do something. Something that will change your life completely. You are here to make things right. Make pain your ally. Fear is a mentor. luck? Try it for yourself. This place is full of surprises and dangers. But no matter what happens, stay human until the end. Children of Hexes frozen in time, voted them secrets bound in shadows, the power to devour the world of Vampire's Paradise. If you'll just take my hand. People are overrated. Books are far more lovely. You call that a sword? Looks more like a toothpick. You guys are too serious. <laughs> Let's hit the tavern. Bet you a sack of gold, I can get an arrow through his eye. Be gone, mortal. These lands are not for your kind. Not without mercy. Depart this place while thy life is still intact.
Not too long into the delicious Last Course DLC for Cuphead, you climb a ladder to a floating island, and you're greeted with this. When I first saw this, I had to take a second. It's a gorgeous handcrafted castle set, capable of full rotation, animated completely in stop motion, with finer details like waterfalls, motion blurred propellers, and towers, each with their own unique faces. Cuphead is no stranger to stop motion animation backgrounds, utilizing them in the infamous dragon fight and the genie boss. But this is on a whole other level. And what's even more impressive than how this model looks is the story behind Studio MDHR's collaboration with the veteran stop motion animators at Screen Novelties who were already huge fans of Studio MDHR to take Cuphead's iconic art design and elevate it to another level. The castle isn't the only story to be told here either. It, along with the rest of the King of Games portion of the DLC, is only a small part of the delicious last course, and yet this series of five bosses never feels like an afterthought. Quite the contrary, the King of Games exemplifies Studio MDHR's commitment to quality and its vision. To learn about all of these stories and more, we spoke to the members of the Studio MDHR team, as well as some of the creators behind this beautiful model, to find out the origin of this spectacular castle, the inspirations and design decisions behind all five King of Games bosses, and the soundtrack that brings it all to life. This is Art of the Level. The main game of Cuphead is split into two different types of levels, the plentiful headlining boss battles and the run and gun platforming levels that reward you with currency you can then use at the shop to buy new weapons and charms. But in the delicious last course, Studio MDHR wanted to try something else to fill that complementary role. Something that had actually been on their mind since the beginning of Cuphead's development, but wasn't feasible in the scope and scale of the base game. In the original game, before we had decided on platforming levels, we were like, what if there was a different type of boss that you could only parry to, to engage? So if you actually jump back to some of our earliest postings of the game, there's a weird jellyfish that moves back and forth. So the same concept kind of existed at that point, where we were going to have an airship that would move around and reappear, and it was kind of a fun way to earn coins. But what we ended up deciding on was... Like the game was already so boss heavy that we kind of wanted a slightly different break in between playing the bosses. And that's when we decided why not try our hands at the platforming stages. Another factor in scrapping the idea of mini bosses was the amount of work required to come up with a handful of mini bosses for each aisle. The smaller scale of the DLC presented the perfect opportunity. There was only one island, so they only had to come up with five mini boss battles as opposed to 15. And Once Studio MDHR settled on the idea of mini bosses as the method of rewarding coins in the delicious last course, they then had to come up with the setting for these fights. For that, they came back to that original idea, the fight against the jellyfish that took place on an airship. And we started kind of daydreaming between like Fancy Star 1's floating castle where you fight Lassic to like uh, Miyazaki being castle in the sky and then it was like it's trope but it's not like an overused one so at that point where we're like this this is something that we want to lock in is the notion of this this other world kind of detached from the main island that you're on and I mean the logical progression from there would be like if it is a castle then it is logical that a king and a queen live in it so it was like let's take one of the most beloved things chess and and apply it to to what will be up in the castle the result as we all know is a collection of boss fights all themed around chess pieces the pawn the knight the bishop the rook and the queen <laughs> But while Chad and Jared Moldenhauer and the rest of Studio MDHR worked on these boss fights, a modest animation house was putting their own unique talents to work on something that would tie everything together in an unforgettable way. We're just a little uh, sort of creative studio dedicated to 
doing handmade animation or puppetry, anything that involves miniature photography. Seamus Walsh is a co-founder of Screen Novelties, with clients ranging from Nickelodeon to Cartoon Network, and heck, they even did the work for this Fortnite Season 7 trailer. They are masters of their craft, and as it turns out, they were also big fans of Studio MDHR. We had been following what MDHR had been doing for years. Like we all heard about this game that was supposedly going to have a 1930s aesthetic to it. And uh, all of us at Screen Novelties, like the whole reason we started our company is because we wanted to do that kind of like that otherworldly type of animation. And, uh, and, and we all, one of our main inspirations for doing what we, what we do is uh, the early Fleischer shorts. Um, you know, the, the Betty Boops and the, the Fleischer color classics. And so we followed what MDHR was doing, just rooting that this game would somehow finally get actually made. You know, they would release little snippets of it. And uh, when they finally released it, we were just like, oh man, they just, they nailed it. We felt like they had, everyone's tried to kind of like copy that 1930 style with the cycled little scrunch that the, the Fleischers used to do. And I feel like, when, when they, you know, finally released the game, they were like, man, they just really nailed that look better than anyone else really ever had ever since then. Eventually, their paths would cross when Screen Novelties was hired to do some work on the Cuphead show. And the two teams immediately hit it off thanks to their shared love for classic Fleischer era animation. This ultimately resulted in Studio MDHR not only hiring Screen Novelties to work on their Game Awards reveal trailer for The Delicious Last Course, but also to construct the stop motion castle set that would serve as the home of the King of Games. We were pretty taken aback when they asked us to help out because we're like, well, you guys, could, you guys obviously have the capability to do it. But I think they wanted it to be, you know, it was a little more complex with, because th that whole rotating turntable aesthetic kind of comes from the Fleischer Color Classics cartoon, which are all these old public domain things, and they're really great. And the sculptural style of them is so specific. So yeah, it was a pretty short back and forth because, you know, the MDHR folks really know what they want. And we understood the aesthetic and how to translate that dimensionally, which, you know, there's a lot of things that go into that. And um, Kelly is one of our main uh, animation directors, just like dove into that right away, like figuring out, because there was so much stuff about <laughs> how to line it up and make the animation loopable and all that. Speaking of Kelly, meet Kelly. I am Kelly Mazarowski. I am the animation director, production designer for the uh, King of Games. Making the animation match the needs of different states of the game turned out to be one of the biggest challenges Kelly and the team had to face. So the, the castle is on a giant industrial Lazy Susan. And to bring us to any of the um, specific doorway openings, each of the doorways had to be um, mechanically rigged so that when we come to one of the stages, we can animate the doors opening or closing. And then to correct the perspective, to keep everything cute and have a face-like quality, all of the um, set pieces are moving along with our center tower so that when we come to a rest, we can fully align to a stopping position. So the one um, challenge of stop motion is with stop motion, you are literally stopping and photographing every frame. So we lose the illusion of having a shutter give motion blur. And with stop motion in particular, it's kind of charming when you see um, mechanical things moving, but what ends up happening with uh, a propeller, for instance, is unless you have some kind of visual cues to give the propellers um, a little bit of motion blur, it can turn into the classic car driving by and the wheels start to look like they're going in reverse. So the motion blur was a, a cartoony touch that we added that it's very subtle um, and not really 
fully noticeable to the eye, but it really adds an extra little animation flourish. Um, Cause all the 2D animation in the game has, you know, lots of squash and stretch and some motion blur frames and some really fantastic stuff. The castle set took about two months to build and stands as a symbol of both Studio MDHR and Screen Novelty's commitment to quality. After all, this could have just been another overworld map, but the team had a vision to separate the King of Games from the rest of the DLC and make it stand out, and they followed through on it. But let's jump back to Chad and Jared and dive into what this castle houses, the mini-bosses themselves. The King of Games greets you with pomp and much ado to find own gameplay true or the spell fate shall rule. The aforementioned prototype jellyfish boss existed, but the devs didn't really use any cut boss designs for any of the mini bosses in the King of Games. Every mini boss was designed with the unique characteristics of the chess piece in mind, along with what that chess piece represents. The battle against the pawn is arguably one of the simplest bosses in Cuphead, but it's nonetheless unique in that you have to defeat all eight of them in order to clear the battle. The idea to have eight enemies was always something the team wanted to make work, but the fight actually took a few different forms before they arrived on the fight you see right now. When we were designing the pawn fight, we knew we had to have like eight pawn pieces for some reason it made sense. So we're like, how do we get eight small enemies around the screen? And initially it was actually a bunch of them. I think we were going to do stilts. It didn't really have a theme or make sense, but there was like an empty pit. So once you had to jump into where all these pawns were running back and forth, then you would have to like chain your parries across all of them. But we put it out there and there's just not enough screen real estate vertically to to get good play between them. It almost became something that you could just mash a button through or take a few hits. So that initial one of just having a whole bunch already on the ground uh, running around just didn't feel fun. When we started placing these characters and trying to find their, their environment that they would be in and then ended up on library being a possibility for them, which is just one of the few things that we tossed out because we're like, well, it could be like a bed chambers and it's kind of like a bunch of bunk beds where all the pawns would sleep and then we're like, it didn't seem very great. So once we hit the notion that we're doing a library, then we realized it would be the best to have them just outside your reach on the top, all kind of leaping into action one at a time. The next fight against the knight is my personal favorite of the bunch, and it's the closest thing you ever get to a traditional one-on-one -on -one fight against a singular enemy without any tricks involved. In many ways, it's like a side-scrolling version of a punch-out boss fight, with the boss having only a handful of moves, each of which require a different response in order to dodge, and each of which offer a short punishment window as a reward for a successful evasion. The knight was a, was a really fun one to design uh, visually and um, gameplay wise. And I think that kind of even early on as the the fight was being prototyped out, it had some pretty well laid out concept art crudely put on top to get the idea of, uh, you know, being really precise with how that boss was working. And again. We wanted to just hit something that was solely a uh, wait until you see the action of the boss and then react specifically to that attack. As soon as we kind of had that concept down, uh, we, we wanted a theme like where would the night be and we ended up jumping back to Samurai Showdown and being like, Charlotte's stage, I believe it's Charlotte's stage, is like this grand hall and then we're like the that just seems like a perfect place is kind of do a grand hall meets armory and keep in that semi showdown vein of like a sword fight the night is also one of those aha moments where we start playing it and as we finalize it you really it really changes uh you know the the, the base gameplay of cuphead and, and you kind of get into this other little mini game that all of these king of bosses exude 
While the knight is a straight up one on one boss fight, the next fight against the bishop is a little less direct. Here the player must first extinguish a series of candles in order to make the floating head of the bishop vulnerable to a parry, all while dodging a series of projectiles and the bishop himself. Now, earlier I had said that the King of Games bosses largely didn't include any content from cut bosses, but the Bishop did actually rise from the ashes of a scrapped idea that Chad and Jared toyed with in the original game. The Bishop boss fight was actually a pattern from the original game. We were never, we'd never programmed it at that time, but there, there was this idea that we were going to have a Grim Reaper and that if you run too long on any boss fight, then the Grim Reaper may come out to force you into a new secret battle. Of course, again, we were like, let's cut that. It's We don't have the time to just keep adding and adding and adding. Cut to a few years later, when we were designing these new King of Games parry bosses, it was like, is there a way to use that functionality that we wanted from the Grim Reaper? And if you notice, it also kind of ties back to the Grim Reaper from Castlevania 1, which is a moving boss that releases uh, projectiles that move towards the player. In the fight against the Rook, rather than parrying the boss directly, the player must instead bounce back the severed heads that the boss launches towards you, all while avoiding the sparks on the ground and the skulls that get mixed in along with the heads. Pretty grim, right? But the concept for this boss fight didn't always involve an executioner and severed heads. I think some of that original volleyballing the heads on the Rook came on a, an earlier concept, right, Jared? Before we kind of landed on the, the chess theme. Yeah, the Rook definitely was just the, the, the notion of, like, what else can you approach with the parry? So the, the, the notion of, like, bouncing a ball and having to carry it over just felt like a logical progression and it was kind of tossed around early before we had landed on the designs of the king of games themselves and it was even to the point of being like maybe this is some sort of fantasy basketball thing like not really basketball but you see a boss where you gotta bounce like a bomb or something back into the top of an opening that funnels back down into them but there was nothing theme wise that was like visually interesting at that point yeah and it's, it's it's funny that as you're talking about the rook jared it actually has more similarities than i thought to the dynamite headies basketball bonus game in a way like carrying the basketballs over to the right basket when you're talking about the basketballs i'm like wait a second maybe we subconsciously borrowed that idea <laughs> i think i actually think that would be subconscious 100 percent because we were thinking of these as kind of bonus levels and different ways to to achieve a parry or a mini game. I'm, I'm sure Dynamite Hetty would have just snuck into our subconscious. A brawl is surely brewing. Here goes. The last fight in the King of Games is against the Queen. And the unique angle to this fight is the fact that the Queen herself is on a different plane than you. Very much similar to the Donkey Kong Country 3 fight against Bleak. Players must use their parry to fire cannons in order to hit the queen, who's off in the distance, rapidly moving left and right, all the while summoning minions on your plane to try and take you out. It's visually one of the more complex battles in the King of Games lineup, but from a design perspective, it actually wasn't one of the more challenging ones. From a design perspective, if you look at it as just like moving red boxes, it's no different than if they're on the exact same plane. So the challenge unto itself is actually on the planning of the art and, and completing the art itself to create that illusion with the background and with all the animations. Trying to like wrap our hand, heads around what we were going to do with that level was definitely a, a an awesome challenge and just... And the end result of these kind of Robin Hood-esque mice are the ones helping you kind of attack the queen and she's in her, her uh, you know, treasure room of riches. Just, I don't know, it warms my heart when I think back to this. So that's the pawn, the knight, the bishop, the rook, and the queen. But what about the king piece? Well, unfortunately, according to Chad and Jared, while the idea to make the king of games a boss himself was tossed around, it was ultimately scrapped. It's likened to the same thing as Elder Kettle in the first game. We didn't go into designing anything, but we were like, what if there is a way, like a cursed charm or whatever that will set you so if you go back, you would engage in a fight against Elder Kettle. But we couldn't thematically make 
anything make sense and we didn't have time to do it. And then the same thing occurred here where we're like, it would make sense that when you complete all these bosses, you come back and you're thinking about getting your rewards for the coin, but there's actually one last fight with the, the king himself. But we're like, we've already established sort of his functionality and we already established the scope of the game. So let's not just tack on another four months of work to, to figure out how we can make that work. It's not just the mechanics and the look of these bosses that make this section quite literally sink. Cuphead's music is well known for pairing its 1930s cartoony art style with big band numbers featuring lots of percussion, catchy bass lines, and roaring trumpets. But as with everything else in the King of Games, the team wanted to go in a different direction to make the mini bosses and the floating island feel distinct from everything down below. Chris Madigan, the composer on both Cuphead and the DLC, said that he actually got less direction on the DLC than on the original game and had a lot of freedom and trust to try some things that he didn't in the main game. The main theme throughout the King of Games, entitled Blu-ray on the Board, epitomizes this new approach. I would say the King of Games section overall, not just that tune, but I, I wanted to actually do something. I wanted to differentiate that from the rest of the game. And that one definitely, in my opinion, has a bit more classic old King Cole cartoon kind of sound. I, I wanted that to really stand on its own. And so I was pretty influenced in, in all of that stuff by more cartoon music than the rest of the game, arguably, but also more tunes from the uh, Baroque era and pretty classical music era. So a beret is um, a, a French dance, which kind of has the same rhythm that we used in that tune, but it's, it's pretty loose. It was just kind of trying to mash up Baroque sensibilities and still kind of the, the, the jazz of the game. It was a challenge to me to kind of try and make something which worked in the game and was quirky but wasn't super goofy and bad sounding in a sense. What's really cool about the implementation of this song throughout the King of Games is that each battle uses a variation of the same song, but there's a different instrumental solo for each fight. The Queen has the most dramatically different rendition and even has its own name in the soundtrack. The Queen's Riguadon. I wanted a different version for the Queen just because it was kind of, you know, she was the final boss of that, that area. So it made sense to me to have something that was different. And all, all four of those tunes, in theory, have the same um, melody. With the except, like, Prelude and Proclamation sets everything up. But King of Games Castle has the same melody that the way on the board has, has the same melody that King of Games Castle Rococo has, which is the same melody that Queen's Rigadon has. And so I kind of wanted to keep all of that within, you know, I wanted to have thematic continuity there. Madigan explained that he also included a bit of a tribute to classic video games in the form of the classic flat six, flat seven, one progression. which ends those tunes, starts those tunes, uh, happens in the middle of some of them, is a super classic flat six, flat seven, one progression. It's what you hear, uh, uh, Final Fantasy, you win. When Mario hits the uh, flagpole, it's the same progression there. So it's kind of like, it was a tribute to uh, video games just using that progression in the first place. Madigan's works in the Delicious Last Course truly puts a bow on the entire experience of Cuphead, an experience that has been such a huge part of his life for the better part of a decade or so. I asked Madigan to sum up what it feels like to finally be at the finish line of a project that has not only meant so much for him and his career, but also one that he's gotten to work on with his friends. It's still a little surreal that it's done. It's kind of been this, even when I wasn't working on it over the past nine, nine-ish years, it's always this thing that's, you know, 
nagging there, like, oh, you should be probably doing some writing or something. So um, it's it's nice to be finished. I think that the best thing, though, is that we spent a long time making this thing, and it's got such a great response from people, and it's, it, it has resonated with people. And I think that the game really oozes a lot of love and personality. It's maybe a little weird that it's over, but it's also uh, the response is very uh, humbling and gratifying. A very special thanks to Chad, Jared, Seamus, Kelly, Chris, and everyone else who we worked with to help give us this access into the development process for the Delicious Last Course. And of course, thank you for watching. For more Art of the Level, make sure to check out our videos on rebuilding the Blades of Chaos in God of War, and how Returnal's Derelict Citadel twists the idea of cycles. And as always, for everything else, keep it here on IGN. Universa era sul suo letto, spasso da stradella, cina e avviso in un banchetto, una bella sfranzinella. La 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 la, una bella sfranzinella, cina e avviso in un banchetto.
Over the last few console generations, independent games that started out as smaller arcade-like experiences, homebrews, and mods have risen to Game of the Year contenders, and in some cases, global phenomena. We're taking a look back at how Microsoft's ID at Xbox program has helped to elevate some of these games from humble beginnings to mainstream blockbusters. But before we get to that, what is an indie game? It may seem like a silly question, but it's important to highlight that an indie is a game developed by a smaller team unlike the one you would see working on a AAA release. Similar to independent films, the absence of financial backing on the level a AAA studio can provide will often result in a more nuanced and creative approach to game development. This includes independently developed but monumentally successful franchises such as Rocket League and Cuphead. Independent games have existed for as long as video games have been around. From their early days as text-based adventures created by hobbyists in the late 1970s to the age of floppy disk shareware and Doom mods in the early 90s, and later on, the web-based era of Flash games and smaller online-only titles. But it wasn't until the mid-2000s that indie developers would get better access to the critical game-making tools at affordable prices and, more importantly, would have the means to distribute their games to a wider audience via online services like Xbox Live Arcade. Thanks to this open economy of distribution, independent developers are now able to showcase their creations to a significantly wider audience, giving them a better chance to blow up. And as a result of this often bare bones and generally creative approach, indie developers have made some pretty mind blowing and sometimes very unique and memorable games, such as Among Us, High on Life, and Gang Beasts. Since 2004, Microsoft has been helping support these visionaries bring their games to life through programs such as ID at Xbox and the ID at Xbox Developer Acceleration Program. Back in 2004, Microsoft launched a service on the Xbox 360 called Xbox Live Arcade. Initially, it was set to be an innovative digital service where people could play bite-sized arcade games such as Ms. Pac-Man, Bejeweled, and Joust. As the years progressed, the service grew to include notable indie games such as Super Meat Boy, Castle Crashers, and Geometry Wars. The service was heralded as a financial and critical success and helped bring more genre-defining independent games such as Alien Hominid, Shadow Complex, and Limbo to a much larger audience. Fast forward to 2013, when Microsoft released its successor to the Xbox 360, the Xbox One. Microsoft changed the name of Xbox Live Arcade and made indie game development even more accessible thanks to the feedback they had received from independent developers who had used Xbox Live Arcade in the past. Independent developers at Xbox, or ID at Xbox, not only helped developers with game distribution across Xbox and Windows, but also gave developers access to tools such as Xbox dev kits, the option to add achievements, and the ability to update their games for free, just to name a few. These tools save developers a ton of money, and when it comes to independent art, every penny saved is a penny earned, or a penny poured back into the development of the game. More recently, Xbox announced the ID at Xbox Developer Acceleration Program. This program is dedicated to helping empower developers from underrepresented communities, diverse backgrounds, and more unique voices. And that's pretty cool, because games should be made by everyone, for everyone. Over the last 10 years, thousands of games have been released with the help of ID at Xbox, such as Tunic, Unpacking, Moonlighter, Vampire Survivors, Dead Cells, and the game that everyone likes to look at but never actually beat, Cuphead. Outside of these mega hits, notable releases through ID at Xbox include Untitled Goose Game, Inside, and about 2,994 other games, which have earned a collective payout of over $4 billion to over 5,000 devs in over 100 countries. Not bad for a bunch of games made by small teams of people who, just a few years ago, would have had to sign over an arm and a leg to get the funding necessary to make a hand-drawn video game where a gambling addict Cupman and his enabler brother fight the devil to pay off some debts. So, ID at Xbox, what's next? ID at Xbox is here. IGN and Xbox are teaming up to give you an exclusive look at some of the coolest upcoming indie games in a brand new showcase that's jam-packed with trailers, never-before-seen gameplay, surprise reveals, and more. Plus, stick around after for a deeper dive into gameplay from some of the games revealed in the show today. Why are there so many fish? The future of indie games has arrived, and it all starts right here, right now, on IGN.
The monolith has stood tall since the time before written history. Its origin, a mystery. Its power, unrivaled. A thousand years after a mass extinction ravaged civilization, the world of Gliese is in peril once again, as dark forces, revenants, from a forgotten time come to claim that power. But hope is not lost. A hero will rise and take arms against the darkness and uncover the secrets of the past to save the future. In the darkness, there is light. The world awaits. Hello and welcome to the 10th annual ID at Xbox Showcase. For the next hour, we'll be checking out the next generation of incredible and exciting indie games coming to Xbox and PC. Now, for 10 years, ID at Xbox has empowered over 5,000 independent developers to self-publish their very own games. I cannot wait to find out what games we get to see today. This showcase is absolutely jam-packed. Well then, let's get into it. Here's a look at some incredible indies courtesy of ID at Xbox. Art thou the devil come to renege on his bargain? No, but I get that a lot. Perhaps thou art death. Come to claim me and break the contract. I just want to stop this place from breaking my place. And I say... Thou shalt go no further. <sighs> oh, brother. Have it your way.
like Ghana hackers like us? Most people think we don't exist. Intuitive hacking without all the invasive cybernetics. They think we're science fiction, and that suits us just fine. I scour encrypted information, drawing on people's most intimate emotions, intuiting their private thoughts, and disguising myself within their stolen data. To the few who know we exist, Icona hackers are malicious, but we're nothing in the face of what we're up against. A system of lies looms over the city of Abraxa. A manhunt for a terrorist has locked down the Zirkin Hill district. No communication until they say so. But it's not the terrorist that scares me. Something unsettling is happening, and my best friend Rebecca disappeared right into the middle of it all. Rebecca, if you're out there, know that I'm coming for you, no matter what. We'll find the truth, together. You just saw trailer reveals for Hellboy, Everspace 2, Sea of Stars, Soul Estate, and Worldless. And good news, Everspace 2 is coming to Xbox Game Pass when it launches on consoles August 15th, so get ready to take on hordes of enemy ships in the single player space shooter. And if minimalist action platformers are more your speed, stick around after the show today because we'll be playing Worldless, the 2D adventure platformer with turn-based combat built by No Name Studios in Barcelona. ID at Xbox is all about supporting indie studios and empowering creators to make their games a reality. Since 2013, ID at Xbox partners have released over 3,000 games and nearly 600 have been made available via Game Pass. And there's even more in the works. Let's take a look at some indie games coming your way. you try entering the castle this way? It's been far too long since I've had living playthings. Come down and face us, Hexstar. Keep them busy, my pets. <laughs> Tear them to pieces, my minions.
60 seconds, focus on my voice. Your mind is relaxed and open to hearing about a new party game from Jackbox Games called Hypnotorious. Hypnotorious. What is Hypnotorious? It is a game where I, a master mentalist, free your psychic being from your corporeal trappings, then hypnotize you into believing you are a completely different person or even an inanimate object. But you won't all be hypnotized to be the same thing, oh no. You'll have to discover each other's hidden identity. And how will you do that, you might ask? Why, with silly questions, of course. Based on everyone's answers, I'll give you an opportunity to find your group mates and reject those who feel like they don't quite belong. Sounds fun, doesn't it? Hypnotorious is part of the Jackbox Party Pack 10, coming this fall.
hey, you're watching the 10th annual ID at Xbox Showcase. You just saw brand new trailers for Myth Force, Jackbox Party Pack 10, Roman Sands, Scarlet Deer Inn, and Rain World Downpour. Now, you won't have to wait long to play those games, but you especially won't have to wait long to play Rain World Downpour, and that's because it's available today, right after the stream. Surprise! All right, let's keep things moving. The next game needs no introduction. That's because it's the smash hit Vampire Survivors, and it's getting a brand new couch co-op mode. Missed the announcement trailer? Let's check it out again right now. The bullet hell with your besties. Vampire Survivors is going couch co op. Team up to face creatures of the night and threaten lifelong friendships. The whole Vampire Survivor saga in Couch Co-op starting August 17th. Vampire Survivors cannot be held responsible for any loss of friendship that may occur. Terms, conditions, and garlic apply. Now you just saw the brand new co-op mode coming to the immensely popular and super fun Vampire Survivors. You know, I was actually wondering if it was even physically possible to fit one more character on the screen during a very intense round of Vampire Survivors. You know, luckily, you'll have your questions answered very soon. That's because we're playing some co-op Vampire Survivors right here on the show in just a little bit. Woo, super excited for it. Now, we've got to take a very quick break, but stick around because we've got tons more games to show you right here on ID at Xbox. We'll see you in a bit. This broadcast is brought to you by the Xfinity 10G Network. Get a game-changing connection today for a faster, more reliable tomorrow. The future starts now. Welcome back to IGN Live at San Diego Comic-Con. The biggest pop culture celebration on Earth once again descends on San Diego. And if you can't be there in person, IGN Live is the next best thing. It's going to be great. Join us for first looks and new trailers from the most anticipated movies, shows, games, and plenty of comics, collectibles, cosplay, and more along the way. We'll try to follow along the best we can and relay that information to you. And it all starts July 21st. Cinefix Top 100, a list so secretive even we don't know what movies are on it or where they rank. What do you mean you don't know? Each episode will reveal one of the movies. Did I rush? It felt like I rushed. That was good. I liked it. Talk about why it belongs and finally find out where it ranks. Are you not entertained? Are any of the movies we've shown here even on the list? I have no idea, and it drives me crazy. <laughs> Join us as we find out on the Cinefix Top 100, Mondays, starting July 3rd. Why so serious? Welcome to Super Debatable. When you got big takes on superheroes as hot as ours, well, you need a place to vent them. And that's exactly what we'll be doing week after week on Super Debatable, arguing over the most divisive topics facing fans. The MCU, that multiversal mess peaked years ago. It's all downhill from here. James Gunn and Peter Safran should absolutely nuke the Snyderverse. Yeah. We could argue about this. All day. And we will. Join us on Super Debatable Fridays on IGN. Welcome back to the 2023 ID at Xbox Showcase. Let's get back to the games. Here are some weird, crazy, bold, and scary games coming soon to Xbox and PC. Check it out.
18 years. 18 years of agony and torment, waiting for the prophecy to be fulfilled. Forced into being a mere bystander, seeking redemption for the hell that she set in motion. Now, she has him in her grasp. He tried to escape, but the nightmare wouldn't end. I watched her sacrifice her whole family just to get what she wanted. He doesn't even know the danger he's in. But he's the only one who can stop her and end this. Daniel, I'm sorry. Think this is a party? Can't count on no one around here. You're only making it harder on yourselves. Now you just saw Axiom Verge 2, Stray Souls, Birth, and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now the fact that all of those games just stood toe to toe with Leatherface and survived is a testament to just how awesome they all are. Oh, and good news, Axiom Verge 2 is available on Xbox today, finally. Now, it's time for us to check out some more games. Let's roll right into it. What if my grandma lives in a big city? She would wake up early and drink her morning herbal tea in a cozy cafe. Then she would have a slow stroll downtown and take a cable car to the bustling port market for her weekly shopping. I can imagine her there, dressed in a hat and coat, carrying her heavy basket. She'd chat with her friends in the afternoons while picking up her pension at the post office. Nah. 
That seems a little far-fetched. Maybe she lives somewhere far, far away. Her village could be tucked away between huge rocky mountains that shield it from the howling winds. Her house might be a small one close to the town center or a large one in the suburbs. On her walks through the snowy forest to the icy shore, she would be able to see my island on the other side of the ocean. Hmm. That's way too cold. I can totally picture her living in a hot and sunny place. Probably in an old town with cute bridges over the channels and houses that are so bright they hurt your eyes in the sun. She'd walk through the narrow paved streets to the bazaar where all the merchants would greet her. As the sun sets, she'd chill on the beach, sitting in her chaise long, sipping fresh juice. But like, those kinds of places are usually only for vacations. Anyway, I'll find out soon enough. Now I'd better hurry and catch my boat.
it really stuck out as a precursor of everything that games would be. Karateka. 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 It was the most movie-like experience I'd ever had in a video game. Love it. It's so good. I didn't know who Jordan Mechner was, but I wanted to be like Jordan Mechner. I was in college. We came home on vacation with this new project that was starting. And we were taking karate lessons. The characters were not little sets of pixels. They, in fact, were fully formed individuals. They had personalities. Rotoscoping is literally tracing each frame to get a frame of animation. The aesthetic and the motion was really unusual for the time. I knew how important music was to tell a story, but I wasn't a musician. So I turned to my dad. I said, well, why not have a series of beats that are tuned to notes? <laughs> It understood that visuals mattered, that full motion mattered, that human beings mattered. Story is, in most games, considered a mandatory aspect. Jordan predates all of that. Karateka will stand the test of time as one of the most elegant game experiences that's ever been done. It's amazing. got a look at Dreamers, Second Wave, Stumble Guys, and Karateka. Okay, I absolutely was not expecting Karateka to show up today. Me neither. Now, we've actually shown you a ton of cool games today, but in a bit, we're actually playing some of them right after this quick break, so stick around. This broadcast is brought to you by the Xfinity 10G Network. Get a game-changing connection today for a faster, more reliable tomorrow. The future starts now. Welcome back to IGN Live at San Diego Comic-Con. The biggest pop culture celebration on Earth once again descends on San Diego. And if you can't be there in person, IGN Live is the next best thing. It's gonna be great. Join us for first looks and new trailers from the most anticipated movies, shows, games, and plenty of comics, collectibles, cosplay, and more along the way. We'll try to follow along the best we can and relay that information to you. And it all starts July 21st. Cinefix Top 100, a list so secretive even we don't know what movies are on it or where they rank. What do you mean you don't know? Each episode will reveal one of the movies. Did I rush it? Felt like I rushed it. was good. I liked it. Talk about why it belongs and finally find out where it ranks. Are you not entertained? Are any of the movies we've shown here even on the list? I have no idea and it drives me crazy. <laughs> Join us as we find out on the Cinefix Top 100, Mondays starting July 3rd. Why so serious? Welcome to Super Debatable. When you got big takes on superheroes as hot as ours, well, you need a place to vent them. And that's exactly what we'll be doing week after week on Super Debatable, arguing over the most divisive topics facing fans. The MCU, that multiversal mess peaked years ago. It's all downhill from here. James Gunn and Peter Safran should absolutely nuke the Snyderverse. Yeah. We could argue about this. All day. And we will. Join us on Super Debatable Fridays on IGN. All right, you've played Vampire Survivors before, but have you ever played with friends? Well, you're in luck because Couch Co-op is being added to Vampire Survivors on August 17th for free. All right, so with me today, we have Akeem, we have Alan, and Jeffrey Vega. How y'all doing? Fantastic, we're about to get into some co-op. I'm, I'm excited know. for this game. Yeah, All right. yeah. it's nice to Let have friends too. Sorry. Sure, we can. Yeah. yeah, we can call him that. Um, yeah. sure. So you have the controls. Do you want to go ahead and press start for us? Oh, then? I'm player one. Yes, yeah. unfortunately. Oh, this, is, <laughs> this is good for me. All right, yeah. start. Here we go. I think I'm gonna go with uh, Antonio. Ooh. Antonio, I'm looking at the gains. Ten percent more damage every <laughs> ten levels. Nice. Ten levels. Okay. Okay, you do have to press 
Hit start. start. Yes. Okay. Oh, there we go. Go. I know how this works. It's a game. <laughs> yeah, okay. You just said you never right. played this. Oh, Ooh. here we go. So here are the different stages. Let's do Not lake. Let's do the lake. Lake? Yeah. Ooh, the Enchanted yeah. Forest stuff. Let's pay. Okay. I can't read. Okay. Here we go. Whoa. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> okay. I really like it. I already like this. Yeah, it's a beautiful map. Yeah. Oh my god. What? These are yeah. werewolves with knives? <laughs> I think they're goblins. Okay, so you are going to be limited to whatever weapons that you are being given, right? Like, you, you see that your character had the specific weapon. It's like, There's where are we arrow. going? I you are moving so all fast. Arrow up here. I'm just running, following, oh my God. following the, okay. the arrow. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, I already leveled up. Yeah. Right. I fire one King Bible. Which one should I do, Stella? Bible. 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 Okay. Yeah, look, it orbits around yes, the character. It's really, okay, yeah, great. It's really good. What more could you ask yeah. for? So, okay, so we're going in order. All of the XP, which is the blue bar up top, it does yep. get shared with everyone. So the XP goes in order. So where where's my character going? <laughs> <laughs> you have so a double Bible order. already? So it's oh, going to be. Why? Oh my God! Do you have the character that doubles it? That doubles all the. Oh yeah. wait. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Everyone way. go through here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go through the thing. Wait, this is such a bad idea. Oh no. <laughs> This We're is gonna a do fun idea. Oh, don't worry, oh my don't worry. god, this is a bad idea. Is this is a bad time to stay claustrophobic because <laughs> I, I actually, with my two Bibles, I don't know if I can fit through here. Yeah. Okay, you oh, I got the ground! Oh, nice. Wow. Oh, I got a weapon. On the map? Yeah, yeah I'm I gonna take it. that. Sure. Sure. All right, all right. Yeah. But otherwise, Wait. all Oh, are we at the edge of space and time? <laughs> yeah. Uh, otherwise, all the XP is shared. Um, this, yeah, I think we, we may have. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay we are. We gotta, we gotta fight back. Guys, wait, I'm, oh, I'm on the front lines here. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm gonna do uh, Santa, Santa water. water. Yes. Okay. Share some of that, baby. It's, it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> we need it's some like, water. It's not great. It just hits randomly. <laughs> oh. Wait, I okay. We are <laughs> stuck. We are stuck. Can the melee characters? Um, so, what is God? We got uh, okay. somebody leveled up though. I did. All right, so I gotta choose something here, and I think I'm gonna choose some high damaging. Okay. Uh, X. Yeah, action. Some, yeah, some melee for sure. Okay. Some action is what I call it. So right now I'm in a coffin, which is fine. Uh huh. Yeah, that's fine. It speaks to the name. You, you are know, kind of Empire blocking our way right out. Though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is couch co-op, so it's fine that I'm in a coffin because I still have you guys. Yes. Yeah, as long as you cover to your mourn mouth. your death. Oh. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the, the healthiest person got the chicken? Wait, I'm in. I'm oh, back. Oh, I think in. I just died. Careful, careful guys. Ah, oh, mushroom people. We've kind of cornered ourselves. We probably should get out of this corner. Yeah, I, no, I kind of like it. It's, it's I like my, oh, no. I left my two Bibles in the coffin. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, we got cornered again. Okay. No. So, yeah. So, this is actually... Okay, what are we going to do? Uh... Uh, we're gonna level up Santa Water Chice. Oh my god. Let's go, water. more water. Okay, I just really want There are fish! Look at the fish! What is oh, that mushroom guy? guy? <laughs> oh my oh, god. Oh, I actually can't get out of here. I think I might meet my maker soon. This right. is <laughs> okay, well, yeah. I would have been next in line to get the leveling because Wait. it goes in order with like how many players. Okay, uh, is it just me? This is bad. Yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah. I'm about to come okay, back up though. Great. Well, if the leveling hadn't skipped me because I was dead, that would have been right, great. But it does, it, we're shared, and it goes with everyone. Yeah. and. Okay, great. You're, Watch you're out for the up. janitors with brooms. I don't know why. That's a giant chicken. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I'm alive. Wait, is the chicken pecking my coffin open? I think. I think. <laughs> you know. I think we really chose. <laughs> Wait, I'm about to. We chose the best map, guys. Yeah. yeah. No, no, oh, we did. Level. We chose a great map. We just chose the wrong place <laughs> to go. All right, yeah. yeah. Let's can we can we leave? Okay, yeah, I'm back out. Let's down. go down. Let's go down. Let's go down. To, yeah, we gotta use I'm down. I'm down. Leave. Where's oh, everybody? Oh, I'm at the chicken. bottom. Well, chicken! I'm about to die. I okay, died again. Okay, that's. Fine. I don't know where. Right, I'll, I'll leave the oh, charge. I was going the wrong yeah. way. Oh, you, you have to yeah, stay I'm, within I'm the screen. What's going on? Because you can't leave. That's the, okay. So co-op is a little bit harder because you don't get free range of the screen. So when we decide to move, we all have to move together. Gotcha. Teamwork is what it is. The chicken is blocking the passage of all the other. Wait, you're telling me. Co-op is like a cooperative right. sort of gameplay mechanic because. Oh, am I? I'm back up, but I'm not in the same area. Yeah, I'm holding everyone back at the bo top of the screen here. Uh, right, how, about, how about we just do a re redo? Redo? Yeah, let's, let's yeah, do a redo so we, we can. Uh, distract them. Them. Distract, them. <laughs> distract them so I can get There's away. A giant toad guy at my coffin. I think he's trying to pry me open. Wait, I'm about to. Okay. I don't even know how. Wait, I'm about to be yeah, alive. I'm about to be alive. I'm gonna run down. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running down to the screen. Look, I'm running. I'm running. Is go. that is that the right way to go? I think I'm that stuck. might be the right way. I'm yeah. stuck. I'm at the yeah, literal right. bottom of the screen. All right, we're we're, 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 we're coming, coming for you. Oh my god. Okay, we're going back up. Going down. This is no no no. That's not okay. Oh, that's why we're going. All right. Okay. Well, we're all together. We're all together. We're all together now. Okay. We're all alive. 
Okay, we are hey, safe. Let's go to life! Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> this is a terrible <laughs> idea. Who thought of this? <laughs> All right. Someone take As my, Antonio, uh, I'm going to pick the hollow. What does this do? Augments max health by 20%. That's probably that's good. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. we keep dying, maybe mm -hmm. that's good. Okay, well, we have a little breather. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys like about the game so far? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like how hectic it is. I feel yeah. Like, we're, like, yeah. Every five seconds, we're all screaming. I like that you can get back into the game after regenerating in your coffin like a vampire. That but, is uh, nice. Yeah, I, just, yeah I, I love the shared uh, 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 experience points. Do you? Yeah. I, I don't it. right now because I've gotten <laughs> skipped like twice. <laughs> Stop dying. It's always, I like the oh my god because I'm slacking, so you guys are kind of Oh, I'm going to die again. Okay, yeah. all right. This, look at that! Look at the horn right there. Where, 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 you guys are, I'm outside of the maze. Where is everybody? I, I was I'm trying to go. Inside. That's I'm my coffin there. there. But there's I'm, so I'm, I'm, I am cornered. Okay, my Bible's can only do so much. Do some, do some damage. I am, but I'm. There's about so to much die. XP right there. I'm, oh my god. I'm grabbing it as I, I died. Okay, right. I am. I am. I'm right, I am out of the coffin, but there's no. I got the XP. I got the XP. Oh my god! Look at how, look at how that bar went. I know. I love it. Okay. Okay. All right. Every game I can. Oh no! We can only stay. Stay in this area. This yeah, is awful. I'm still stuck in the maze. All right, here we go. Thank you for whomever died so I could get this level. <laughs> it up. was me. <laughs> I appreciate it, Jeffrey. Thank okay. you so much. All right. Get the whip in my honor. You know, I, we need more damage. We, we need more. Yeah. Yes, we need that. that. Yeah, we need. Because, like, again, so, so the point of this game is to be able to like sit still and like have nothing touch you. So for me, my personal favorite weapon is the whip because you have like you have it on both sides. Yeah. So Akeem, what's your favorite weapon so far in the game? Oh, I gotta say the whip. I'm loving. Yeah. It. Okay. Love okay. The, the whip is it's a cool whip. I love it. Okay. Okay. Alan. Uh, I, I really like the sand and water actually. Really? It does a lot of damage. Wow. You guys are making fun of me for wanting to get the sand and water and look at us now. Oh my god, I'm getting the worst. My first level up and I got nothing. It's so I, bad. I, I, I died. I died. Oh, careful with the fish. I did, not, I did not survive. Jeffrey, what's your favorite weapon? Uh, well, when I'm not in the coffin dead, I would say I love having the King Bible because uh, it's so good. it just slaps you say every... A King's Bible? No, How? it's, it's not King your Bible. Bible. But uh, yeah, he, I am Bible. slapping all the ghouls and monsters with this part uh -oh, of the book. I'm, gotcha. right. okay. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back in. Look how much XP I'm getting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Collect it, collect it, collect it. Okay, Aren't do we want to leave uh, this crowded uh, area? Which I believe yeah, so. Let's go this is the right, the right. Oh, there's a chicken! There's there's a chicken. chicken. Watch out for get the him, chickens. Get him, get him, get him, get him. <laughs> I, there. Oh. These are lunch. Oh, 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 Wait, someone got a time freeze power. Kill him, kill him. Get them all. Whoa. Oh my Wait, God. you're invincible. I'm not doing it. Okay, yeah, yeah, just run into them. <laughs> well, oh no, okay, all right, I ran well, into them okay. and look what happened. Okay. Okay. I, didn't okay. the, okay. I didn't know the timer for the invincibility, I'm sorry. To the right, to the right. Uh, I'm gonna do an empty tone. Go, 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 go. To the right, to the right, to the right. There we go. There's a lot of monsters here. I only have the one projectile, so I'm not doing super good. Would you guys be scared in real life if you were in the game? Yes. Okay. The giant <laughs> Are you I, I would wonder why am I yeah, in the, the game? Yeah, the giant what, what chicken? You would you be scared if you saw a giant <laughs> Would you be scared if you died? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just want to make sure. Oh my god. Guys, lead them into my water pools. Oh, oh, there's a chest. There's a chest. There's a chest. There's water on the ground. Nice. Ooh, treasure found. Oh, oh yeah, it, and it rolls get, for whoever it goes to. That's cool. Look, you can see it on the side. This looks like a casino love it. machine. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, Thank you. No, come and on. And Tony win. <laughs> keep, whatever, keep whatever. I am still dead, but I'm about to be alive again. I mean, you know, you're, you're keeping the chicken preoccupied. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. Chicken meets chicken. Here we go. Oh my god. I feel like we're in the clear right. Okay, are we, are we going? Are we going to the yeah. to the right? Okay. Where are we going? going I don't want to go to a maze. Yeah, look, we're trying to we're following guess. that arrow. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah. Leading okay, us. okay, 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 okay. So far so Ooh, good. Ooh, I am at like one inch. Ooh. Oh, what's what that? What's this? that? I don't know, I just picked Whoa, it up. Oh, like this is a forest. Oh. Oh, level up. Ooh. Oh, it's me. Finally. Oh my god. Fire one, fire one. Fire one. Yeah, it looks heavy. Yeah, I'm going to try that. I and I Oh, look at that. Oh, I leveled up. Okay. Oh, get another Bible, Bible. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, here we go. You oh, want to be. Oh look my. at all my Bibles. <laughs> the point Guys, of this everyone game, grab one. Yeah, the point of this game is to be untouchable and right. just sit. Yeah, I died. Oh my god, why are there <laughs> so many fish? Wait, yeah, yeah, what is that? Are fish in the forest? These are just a bunch of little I mean, you know. cool guys here. Oh, get the max health. You're super low. Yeah. Where do you see max? Oh, there it is. No, the, but the I, don't think, I don't think that heals you. I think that only increases. Max health increases by 20%. Oh, so it doesn't it'll actually. Be good when you come back. Yeah. yeah. Except we're all dead. <laughs> Oh no. I would either do whip or spinach. We're about to lose. You might as well eat. Are you sure? Yeah. Whip or spinach? Yeah. What's your last? I would just spinach, because you have the two whip already. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's true. You need more damage, because we are 
<laughs> in oh, trouble. Oh, somebody's back up. There you go. I'm up. I'm up. Nice. Okay. Oh, no. You guys, stay alive. I'm almost back. I'm almost Hi. back. We got I'm halfway back. there. Stay alive. I'm about to be back. This is. <gasps> about to be back. Oh, we're about to I'm get back. crowded. I'm, I'm, I'm going to die. I'm yep, back. I'm, I'm back. down. Okay, okay. Y'all have to stay up. Back up. Oh, I got it. Let's go. I'm going to go to chest. Treasure found. Yes. Yes. I just dropped that enough. New chest just dropped. Here we go. Wow, this is a lot of money. Ooh, oh, okay, sword. another Okay, okay, okay. Wait, that's me. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, me, yeah. You got another oh. projectile. All right. You okay, Jeffrey actually has a really good build right now. Yeah, and I definitely planned it because I'm good at the game. That's true. I've, I've heard that you're the expert. I'm famously good at this. Oh, I got killed I by a gnome. Never not played it before. Ooh, oh, no, there's I, a part. No, 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 wow. stay alive. Oh, oh, Jeffrey, you guys supposed to stay alive. My, yeah, Jeffrey, I was trying to. One drop. Uh, I got another Bible and I was just reading through it and I. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, come on, you know you how know it is. What? I'm surprised we actually brought that back from being in the maze. I totally thought <laughs> yeah. we were gonna oh, start yeah, over. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. we just cornered ourselves for no reason and died. Well, yeah, yeah, we came in the forest. Right. Well, you know, we were. Yeah, we, you were follow, We were following the arrow. It's okay. It's fine. I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm proud of us, though, especially for your first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was really exciting. Yeah, yeah, I think we did good. Yeah, what do you guys like about the game? I, I feel like this is way more fun in co-op. I feel like I, I, <laughs> like I want to play really? with friends. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I wouldn't have as much fun playing it single player. You definitely don't get to respawn in single player. You just die. Oh. Yeah. So Ooh, it is nice, but nice. Yeah. it is really hard because you have to move together. So it kind of forces you to work together. But Alan, what did you like? Uh, I like having a scapegoat. You know, just being able to blame <laughs> Jeffrey for all our losses. Wait, what? It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I just know that I'm I'm doing great. If, if yeah. Well, I mean, no, we collectively do great. I mean, that's the thing. Like, it's 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 uh it's a teamwork. It's teamwork. So no, I, I love the couch co-op aspect of this game. I think this game was meant to be played with friends. You think so? Oh, okay. Yeah. I think you should play it solo and then tell me how you feel, but couch co-op I will do no definitely. such thing. I am playing only with friends. Oh, do you prefer to play it solo? It's because we're bad, right? You know what? <laughs> I, can, no I know I can rely on myself, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yelling advice and no one taking it, but yeah, you know, it's, it's fine. So it's fine. It was fun. It was fun. But I think couch co-op has its own place, yeah. but you know, I will also be playing this on my own. You can do either. That's the good. Yeah, that's, that's the best part. <laughs> no matter how you like to play. You <laughs> yeah, and it's a free update, and yes. I love free stuff. You know that, Akeem. I know. That's the only way you get stuff. Oh my God. All right. Well, <laughs> stick around because after this, we're taking a longer look at Worldless. This broadcast is brought to you by the Xfinity 10G Network. Get a game-changing connection today for a faster, more reliable tomorrow. The future starts now. Welcome back to IGN Live at San Diego Comic-Con. The biggest pop culture celebration on Earth once again descends on San Diego. And if you can't be there in person, IGN Live is the next best thing. It's gonna be great. Join us for first looks and new trailers from the most anticipated movies, shows, games, and plenty of comics, collectibles, cosplay, and more along the way. We're trying to follow along the best we can and relay that information to you. And it all starts July 21st. Cinefix Top 100, a list so secretive even we don't know what movies are on it or where they rank. What do you mean you don't know? Each episode will reveal one of the movies. Did I rush it? Felt like I rushed it. was good. I liked it. Talk about why it belongs and finally find out where it ranks. Are you not entertained? Are any of the movies we've shown here even on the list? I have no idea and it drives me crazy. <laughs> Join us as we find out on the Cinefix Top 100, Mondays starting July 3rd. Why so serious? Welcome to Super Debatable. When you got big takes on superheroes as hot as ours, well, you need a place of venom. And that's exactly what we'll be doing week after week on Super Debatable, arguing over the most divisive topics facing fans. The MCU, that multiversal mess peaked years ago. It's all downhill from here. James Gunn and Peter Safran should absolutely nuke the Snyderverse. Yeah. We could argue about this. All day. And we will. Join us on Super Debatable Fridays on IGN. Worldless is a beautiful and haunting minimalistic 2D platforming game with turn-based combat. 
I'm actually not quite sure how that works, but let's dive in and figure it out. Let's do it. <laughs> So right. yes, this is the worldless demo. Uh, so we get basically just a taste of the game. Mm -hmm. The first thing that's super striking is the art style. I love the the way that the world looks in here. You kind of get an idea of what the map is. It's a constellation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I feel like it plays really well onto all that. So you get these nice little like animations that pop up as you walk oh. around. So like you know where you've been. Pick up these little uh, little rectangles and give you more HP. Now, important question: Do you have double jump? Uh, I do not, not yet. Oh, so but you that, can get it. That, that's one of the cool things about this awesome. game is essentially you um, you go into combat with all these different mm -hmm. uh, enemies, like this one, um, and it shows you oh, nice. you have a time limit per okay. turn. Uh, you have magic attacks, you have physical attacks, and so depending on what you use, you get sort of different weaknesses for enemies and stuff. This okay. is just the sort of base entry yeah. one. Um, so it's just weak against everything. But then when it becomes the enemy's turn, you have to block against attack. Oh, that's cool. And depending on the timing, you can actually get like a perfect block where it doesn't um, deplete your shield at all. I, so I don't like turn-based games because I feel like there's not much interactivity with it, mm -hmm. but I love stuff like this where you have to actively block or deflect, and that makes me feel a little bit happier about playing this game. Yeah. Because it's like, I love that because it actually engages you. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that this game does that. Yeah, you have to sort of like switch up your strategy depending on who you're facing and stuff. There's also like some interactivity with the platforming here. So you'll see these little like dots that pop up. Mm. You press Y to sort of like activate those uh, platforms. Ooh. You can always bring Is up the map? map. Yeah. Wait, that's so cool. Yeah, so it kind of just like pops out of your head and you can <laughs> always check in if you're not sure where you need to go. Yeah. But yeah, these are these little platforms that I was talking about. You kind of just like have to time your jumps right and then you can sort of absorb them and give you a nice little platform to jump off of. I just realized that there's no HUD here, which is actually, I was because I was like, wait, I'm so immersed in this, and it looks beautiful, and the comet looks so smooth. And when you brought up the map, I was like, wait, there's no HUD. Mm -hmm. This is great. Yeah, it's awesome. So this is another big part of the game. You actually can absorb the powers of your enemies. Oh. Um, so depending on what is on the bottom right corner here, it'll show us, like, essentially what uh, fills up our, our meter more. Mm. And then once we fill up the meter fully, uh, we can absorb the power. So right now it's a, a okay. fist, so physical attacks will be the one to cool. sort of fill up that bar and give us a little bit more uh, damage and capability to absorb their powers. So as you can see, it's going up at times 200%. That's pretty good. <laughs> Once we get to that bar, we'll be able to hit our bumpers and be able to absorb their powers. Here we go. So absorb powers, and then it gives you essentially a combination of different inputs to, to hit. Oh, nice. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Does this really cool animation? Oh, okay. Y Y X. Oh, you have X, to. Boom. Do you have to guess it? Because it's a question mark. So depending on how full the the meter is, oh. it'll give you more of the. Of oh, the, that's so cool. The, uh, yeah. So make it kind of awesome. like. That's awesome. It, if you're if you're really good at sort of figuring out those on the fly, it, yeah. it's cool to kind of just like oh. spam it and try to figure out what it is. Um, you can also do like educated guesses. Yeah. Um, and then as you level up, you get these little skill trees that you can that's sort awesome. of. That's uh, awesome. Unlock as you go through the game. Yeah. Obviously, this is a demo again, so it's mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to get the full idea of everything. But yeah, but shout out to Studio No Name, and they're actually based out of Barcelona. Yeah, and shout out. They made this, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean, ooh, like, ooh. I think this is, is our that enemy, or is that? Our oh, well, they're Agnes. Gone. <laughs> oh no, we fall. Oh no, a scripted fall. Oh. What are we gonna do? <laughs> but yeah, I think this this area especially is one of. The Whoa. coolest designs. Yeah, you can sort of check out the the full map here. Oh, God, um, so you can so enemy. you can check it on the fly if you just yeah. hit the the right thumbstick, okay. or you can go into it and actually check That's out the. So cool! Map. I love the transitions from gameplay to showing maps like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially because it's like it's all in the the characters like yeah. head. <laughs> Are we supposed to be going further down? I think so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so. I believe oh. right here is what where we'll get. The, yeah, there we go. Our first power up. Uh, so. Yeah, we absorb this uh, innocent bystander's power, and now we have a dash. <laughs> oh, cool. And the cool thing is you can do it in... Oh, my God. No uh, way. Yeah, three directions. So you can okay. do a little bit more creativity in cool. the way that you can sort of handle these platforming challenges. I also love that if you hit Y, you just kind of like can make these little like bloom <laughs> effects happen. Aw. This looks so pretty. Yeah, this world, it, it definitely feels very spacey. Especially with the way that you kind of float when you jump, even just normally. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah, it feels very floaty, which is mm -hmm. nice. I always like that in platformers, like, kind of gives you a little bit more leeway to, to reach the 
hard to reach areas <laughs> and platforms and all that good stuff. Yeah, I also, you know, I'm impressed that there's so much fluidity in something that is so minimalistic, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're used to playing a 2D platformer with like a little bit more of a sprite for the main character, but like it still works. Yeah, absolutely. And then here we just got a orange power up. So this sort of lets us go towards some that we don't unlock just by combat. You actually have to find these in the oh. world, I believe. For example, this one lets us charge up the sword to knock up enemies, which is pretty nice. cool. This one also gives us a, I believe this one gives you a parry on perfect blocks. Ooh, that looks so, yeah. cool. Looks okay. Really cool. I'm gonna go for this one. Yeah. Because yeah, let's 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 try like to look that. as cool as possible for this let's play. Okay. Yeah. So you gotta get the perfect parries though. Um, I'm We're gonna watching try. you. We're judging <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Please do not judge my timing, because. Uh, I'll try. I'll try my best. Oh, I missed one. <laughs> Believe me. I, I don't need it, but yeah. I mean, it's yeah. It would it would mess with me for the entire rest. You're of really the showing off your perfectionism here, dude. <laughs> perfect parries, perfect platforms. We got it all. So here's another one of those rectangles. Oh, let me grab it. There we go. So now we have three. Once we get to the fourth one, oh. it'll actually fill up our HP bar a little bit more. Oh, nice. Okay. And there's some like these guys. Oh, there we go. Boom. So cool. Boom. Just, it feels so nice. Like It looks really fluid. Like, I can't get over just how good it looks. Mm -hmm. So you can see in the bottom right corner, this enemy is weak to those ice attacks, which we can do by pressing Ooh, B. Okay, yeah. And then that'll be a magic attack. You can sort of tell which attacks your enemy's doing based on which direction that little flash of light comes from. So right now it's okay. vertical, so it's going to be a magic attack. Ooh, it. nice. Uh, and then they're weak to ice. Oh, I got to do both. Let's go. Oh, you filled up the bar. Look at it. It's nice. Oh, that was. Oh, it broke my. Oh, no. Every time your guard breaks, your shield resistance will be weakened. Oh, no. OK, OK. OK, but the cool thing is now I can fill up the bar. We're almost to 100%. Yeah. And now we can absorb their power. And it should be. Oh, it does. Yeah, yeah you're right. It just shows everything. Awful. That's so cool. It makes it way easier for us to absorb it. Nice. So after you defeat enemies and absorb their powers, can you fight them again? Uh, so I, I'm not sure about the ones that you've absorbed their powers. There are some enemies that you can uh, re-encounter again, but if cool. you'll see a little, um, like basically a little like orange uh, uh, yeah. diamond shape. Oh, that's, press, okay. You can press Y and that'll re-engage that combat. Cool, I like that. So now we can back trace our steps this way. And we should be able to unlock some new areas now that we have our handy dandy dash. Where did our little nemesis go? Let's check it out. <laughs> so right now we are, actually I'll go further in. So right now we are on the, where that blue arrow is pinging. And right. we're trying to get to where that diamond shape orange is. That's so cool. Okay. Keep going a little bit further left and then we'll, we'll hit a hard right. Just keeping tabs on them. Oh look, look, it's like, the lights in the back are signifying us oh, and the yeah. enemy. Wait, that's so cool. That's that's really cool. Oh like they're gosh. fighting too. Ooh. I love environmental storytelling and I didn't expect to, to I didn't expect to see it in this game. Here we go. Nice. HP bar power up. Let's go. Well, oh, that's a pretty big one. Yeah. So it, it really incentivizes you to sort of like find those little puzzles and try yeah. to find the you know, all the, the different ways that you can sort of buff your character and make your, so cool. make yourself stronger. <laughs> yeah, it's like collecting the shards in like a Souls game and exactly. then like upgrading. That's awesome. And then... Ooh, what's that? This one looks cool. Let's check it out. Oh, oh okay. That one. okay. Horizontal, vertical, vertical, horizontal. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. I did not do that well at all. Ooh. So this one, I guess it hits you with a bunch of different attacks and you have to memorize the Oh, the okay. Um, do we and if you try feel it, it, then it goes. And you just take a bunch of damage. Do it again. Yeah, do it again. Let's okay. see if you get the perfect parry. I, I want to see it. Okay, yeah, yeah, gamer pose. Come on. <laughs> uh, oh, you got on. the first yeah. one. I yeah, think, I, I think I can actually figure this out. Okay, okay, cool. Time. No, I'm totally down. I believe in you. Did not <laughs> They're oh so God. fast. Yeah, it like, I, and I think it gets progressively faster. Yeah. As one. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's move it's on. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Okay, maybe t taking on a challenge boss was not the right way to I mean, practice. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a demo. We're we're it's all right. Just yeah. Do we try it one more time? 
let's move on. Okay, so now we're trying to get back to where we got thrown into this abyss. Yes. So okay, we are cool. almost back to the top. Oh. Man, we made all that progress at the top, and then they threw us down. There's another rectangle. Boom. Nice. Oh, and now we got to do six of them. Giving us a little bit of a challenge. Oh. Oh. Thank God you got that platform. <laughs> yeah. Scary there. Oh, this looks like a nice little open arena. I'm just always anticipating something happening in like wide areas. I'm just like, hmm, yeah. there's gonna be a big fight here. What's up here? Let's see. Ooh. I love the way that the lighting effects sort of adjust depending on where you oh. are, too. Can I observe if... this? I cannot. That looks cool, though. Hmm, okay. I wonder if that's something that we can do uh, in the full game. Whoa, Ooh. what did you just do? Uh, oh, I think I, we just unlocked a new area to go to. Oh, cool. Oh, and now you have to collect even more shards to upgrade your health. That's cool. Let's see. There's so much to discover in this game. Yeah. <laughs> I want to find some more enemies. Oh, no! Oh! Okay, so there's not, there's no fall damage. There's though. no fall damage. Thank uh, God, okay, I, great. I, I would have a very hard time if there was fall damage. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I feel like in a platformer especially, it'd be a little bit punishing, but I mean, also if that's part of the gameplay loop, totally understand. Part of the challenge. Yeah, because we do have that dash. So. Yeah. <laughs> and I just love the, the effects, like the particles that pop up as you're dashing through. Like you see there's like a little like circle, like trail that follows you as you as you go through it. Ooh, there's another. Another guy here. Yeah. What is this? Ooh, that's cool. Wait, what? Let's see what, what we got. Oh. oh, that's so cool that you got Oh, you get a bow. Whoa, yeah, absolutely. I, I will definitely take that. That is and so I'm cool. I'm going to upgrade it since I already have a point there. Oh, these power-ups look so cool. I'm very excited. Try it out. Let's find an enemy to... Also, there's like there's that fighting happening in the background too, and I think it's showing you how to defeat uh, the guy that you're chasing after because Ooh. it showed like the snow, the ice icon. Uh-huh. So I think that's really interesting. I don't know, I mean, I could just be talking on my butt <laughs> about theories. We're just speculating. But like, what if what if that's like telling you how you can defeat like certain enemies or your main guy? That's really cool. Yeah. Whoa, wow. that looks so cool, I, I what? I really like that charge power up attack. That's really nice. Cool. All right, let's do it again. Boom, bam, bam, Yeah, yeah, bam. yeah, yeah, yeah. Magic, oh, magic attack. Okay, that was like a, okay. Was that a perfect parry? I, a perfect I, I block? So. Yeah, it looks like it. Boom. Bam. Nice. Ah, ah. <laughs> uh, oh, now oh, it's, it's, it's shielding now. So we oh. have to get through those little Aww. those little barriers to Nice. See uh oh what? there we go. Nice. Oh my god, look at how look at how it exploded into all those different colors too. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Another skill here. <laughs> oh, more health. All right. Nice. Love it. Okay, Alan, I know we just got our new health upgrade, but I have to stop you right there. Oh, I know, we ran out of time. More. I'm sorry. We can play off screen. Okay, yeah. yeah, let's yeah. Do that. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> if you're curious about this, you can also play the demo, but that was our playthrough of Worldless. Stay tuned for more ID at Xbox after this. This broadcast is brought to you by the Xfinity 10G Network. Get a game-changing connection today for a faster, more reliable tomorrow. The future starts now. Welcome back to IGN Live at San Diego Comic-Con. The biggest pop culture celebration on Earth once again descends on San Diego. If you can't be there in person, IGN Live is the next best thing. It's going to be great. Join us for first looks and new trailers from the most anticipated movies, shows, games, and plenty of comics, collectibles, cosplay, and more along the way. We're trying to follow along the best we can and relay that information to you. And it all starts July 21st.
The Cinefix Top 100. A list so secretive, even we don't know what movies are on it or where they rank. What do you mean you don't know? Each episode will reveal one of the movies. Did I rush it? Felt like I rushed. That was good. I liked it. Talk about why it belongs and finally find out where it ranks. Are you not entertained? Are any of the movies we've shown here even on the list? I have no idea, and it drives me crazy. <laughs> Join us as we find out on the Cinefix Top 100, Mondays, starting July 3rd. Why so serious? Welcome to Super Debatable. When you got big takes on superheroes as hot as ours, well, you need a place to vent them. And that's exactly what we'll be doing week after week on Super Debatable, arguing over the most divisive topics facing fans. The MCU, that multiversal mess peaked years ago. It's all downhill from here. James Gunn and Peter Safran should absolutely nuke the Snyderverse. Yeah. We could argue about this. All day. And we will. Join us on Super Debatable Fridays on IGN. From beyond any known galaxy, bringing with them the laws and ideals of their doomed planet, Thundera. Wait, hold from on. The Stella, hold on. This is not Thundercats. What? Yeah, we're playing Myth Force, not Thundercats. Yeah. All okay, right, well, I know that, but I'm trying to bring the energy sure. yeah. that this yeah, game totally is obviously trying really to capture. I mean, that, like. Yeah. I say. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> why don't you guys appreciate comedy? Mm -mm. Whatever. I do. <laughs> okay, but not mine, clearly. <laughs> Anyways, Myth Force is heavily inspired by Saturday morning cartoons of old and blends first person combat akin to that of sword and sorcery wrapped neatly in a roguelike action adventure game. So, ungrateful jerks, do you want to get into this? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. You don't understand comedy. Uh, well, tell me that one when I carry us through the dungeon, okay? Okay. All right. Say Jeffrey, load us up. Come on. Let's, All right. let's, let's see this. Let's roll it. Let's, let's roll it. Jeffrey, All yeah. right. Yeah. Let's ready up. Here we go. All right. By the power of Xbox, <laughs> we that have the... That's copyrighted, please. Oh, okay. Cool it on the uh, right. the slogans there. <laughs> All right, well, All right. since we're going to be carried, I want to see this. Let's run in. Okay. Yeah, better, guys, I gotta Alan better be the first one running in there. We're like, going out. We're, oh, actually, we're it's in. me. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, All right. Y'all started running before me. Skeleton I... right away. <laughs> I'm okay. killing this goblin. Jeffrey. I'm already exhausted. Dead. How did I? I was Because you ran over that pit of thorns. Yeah, I was excited yeah. to go in. You're our knight. I was excited to go oh, in. I'm, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get the uh, the pots. Every pot I want to break. <laughs> yeah, you break the pots. We'll take out the actual threats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd understand, Akeem. I do. How is there? Do we not? Wow. Oh. Okay. Ah. So each of us has very specific abilities depending on <laughs> what character class uh, mm -hmm. we're playing as. So I'm on the road. I can do pocket sand. Ooh, very, very nice. Right. Ooh, I also yeah. got a little dash that is currently. It's open. I was wondering why all your pockets were, just had lint in this. Yeah, so it's uh, I, I gotta you know let them up before each. Uh, right, you go to the beach right before each. Oh oh oh! Don't stand on that. That platform is sorry, dead. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I do not stand on that platform. It is Ooh. very clearly. Got to run real fast. I <laughs> oh, there's a uh, healing over. potion over here. If somebody wants it. Ooh, I'm gonna. Can I hold it or not? Nah? No, I think it's. Oh man. Okay, here we go. <laughs> goblin. Oh, bless, bless you. you. Thank you. Dude, you're How being so loud right now. <laughs> Wait, this is little goblin. After oh, I. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I just pushed him in the fire. You killed him. Wait. No, I'm you exhausted. Killed the little goblin. I'm exhausted. That's your well, fault. Well, Drink an energy drink. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> How do I get that in the game? Uh, okay, okay, go, 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 go. I can't run as fast as I okay. want. <gasps> oh my god, they're all here. Ah! Oh I'm getting toasted! Why did I jump into that? <laughs> what was wrong with you all? Why? Oh no. That? Okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. This is booby trap. All right, go, 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 go. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, what's what 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 perks are we getting? Well, I'm getting extra damage on kill. Okay. Nice. Sounds useless. <laughs> <laughs> secondary ice bow, secondary heavy, primary. I'm gonna get secondary ice bow. I'm doing a ton of damage. Okay. Ooh, skeleton. That's cool. Ooh, look well. at my ice bow. It's like I'm exhausted. Right. Icy. Oh. <laughs> it's icy. Okay, we are. All right. Pick Wait, out the goblins. Wait. Oh, this is actually really cool. Oh, is the ice bow only one piece? Oh man, I wasted it. Really? No, is it really? I think I wasted it. Wait, yeah. really? Well, it's okay. We'll get more loot. Don't yeah. worry. You wasted it trying to check it out. Yes, well, because I wanted to see what it was like. And not on an enemy. Ooh, rallying speech. <coughs> Rising tides. Rising tides. There we go. Rallying speech. Let's rally. Alan, you talked about um, pocket sand. What else? What other abilities? Do you have? <laughs> nice so, segue. <laughs> very ex excellent job. So uh, oh, I'm no. a rogue, so my whole oh. thing is being sneaky. 
So I got pocket sand that okay. blinds enemies, like so. Surprise. Pocket sand! <laughs> nice. And it sort of blinds them. <laughs> oh, sorry. And then I got a dash that lets me, oh, and I jumped uh, and almost fell to my death. Um, but yeah, so I got a dash, and then I also have this cool ability that lets me jump behind people and do a critical strike. Oh, no, I think. Oh, oh man, I'm stuck on this pink goop. I need to replenish my health. Is there? Yeah, yeah. Do, can you take fall damage? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yep. Don't want to take fall damage. I didn't though. want to. I just yeah. Are, are we right, well, I have a little shield. Damage? Oh, I am on fire. I am on fire. Does anyone still have that health? I'm. I'm. Uh, that was way, way bad. <laughs> Where are you? Oh no. Okay. Get I'm, that skeleton man. All right. Well, I have Got a him. shield up there if anyone needs it. That's my uh, mage. I'm on my way. I also, I'm about to die, and I realized my icon. Wait, am I taking damage? Hello. I got you. Uh, are you? Yeah, I'm yeah, protecting you. Don't worry. Is there a skeleton near you? I'm in the shield. <laughs> Wait, I just realized the the profiles on the bottom left change depending on how much damage you've taken. Right. Yeah. Look, I'm about to die. Oh, that's really amazing. Yeah. I was a skeleton <laughs> when I was dead. <laughs> Like okay, we need it. How do we get over there? Yeah, we gotta, we gotta get some more health, guys. Oh, We're yeah. not looking so good. This is yeah. I'm trying to carry you guys, but it's you're not you, making you, my you, job easy. Making it really We're not making it easy? We're halfway through. Oh. Or the goblins. The go well, yeah. Yeah, that it's goblin just out. came right after me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So we're halfway there. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Here's another shrine. Let's get some more uh, stuff. Ooh, max HP. Yes, oh, please. What? Give it to me. Uh, I can use some of that. Let me see if. Ooh, I got a ton of me that. Ooh, there's a perk for a training montage. <laughs> 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 hey, you can't. <laughs> copyright. Again, okay. copyright. Yeah, yeah we're, you, you were just yeah, saying that we couldn't do the Thundercats. No, no, you're right. It's just that my singing is not good. I didn't think that the copyright would catch it. So here we go. All right, so now that we've gone through a few levels, how do you guys feel? What like what do you like about the game so far? I really like getting new perks after each room. Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. it, it, you can definitely feel a power scaling going on. Like the fact that I no longer one hit skellies <laughs> a lot harder. Yeah. yeah. Don't call them skellies because it makes it seem Mushroom like they're boys. Oh. Really, Are my friends skelly. I don't want to be confused when I destroy them with my ice arrows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your little friend skelly. Well, that's on you. <laughs> yeah. And also, like just just the art direction is is, is really nice. Like yes. it's, it's really akin to to like those Saturday morning cartoon shows that I, I really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, I do like the art style a lot, and the environments are really cool. Yeah, it does feel it, it, it is very like I know I know I know you said it was like Saturday morning cartoon, but it really does feel like I like that self shaded. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's like, It doesn't have to like not everything has to be super open? serious. Like, yeah. Fun. You just need a narrator. Like, like, they're running down the hall. <laughs> suddenly, <laughs> suddenly, I die. <laughs> <laughs> suddenly, Ooh. they can grab an enchant. Yeah, and the narrator oh, dies. Oh, wait, there are two different ways we can go here. Do we go right? Uh, yeah, why not? Let's go right. Okay, okay. I would look down. I forget that I can use my shield. <laughs> well, you oh probably should. You're our knight. I keep telling you yeah, that. Yeah, there's a lot of your fire and your shield, and shield is You're basically pudding. our tank. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, let me get Spare the Dying as a perk. <laughs> yeah, that might be, you know what? That might be a good call. Ooh, it's more mushroom now? Okay, we're, all, we're in the last room, guys. This oh, is, no. Is this really? I don't know. Oh, is it? Here. Oh, another mushroom guy here? <gasps> oh, my God. Look yeah. up. Oh, There's the so many up there. I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. Oh, no, not the plant. Okay. Dang right, it. Don't worry. I got it. Dang I'm down. It. The plant killed me. Oh, you're sorry. I really I like this teleport, teleport ability. Careful. Careful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You and I are the only ones up here because we can. This mushroom buddy's yeah, going to get yeah, me. Yeah. All right. We're going to hit him from well, down here. Just, yeah. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. No, you're good. You're good. We'll, we'll come get you in a minute. Mushroom buddy's got me. No rush, of course. Obviously, I am downed, but that's all right. And I can't help you. Sorry. I'm about to die myself. Well, gremlin? Oh, got him. dang it. Wow, that guy just exploded. I'm surviving. <laughs> Thank you. He turned into Oh, watch out behind you, behind you. Can I get a shield? Can I get a shield? Can uh, well, I'm, 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 hitting, I'm hitting him because I don't know if I can. Ooh, wow, him. nice oh. save. Yes. Nice save. Wow, nice there we go. We made wow. it. Wow, thank you. Wow, that Easy is a piece right there. It. All right, I'm also okay. reviving. Resin here. here. Dun, 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 dun. Help me! Will he be saved? On the next Find out right now. Do the same thing on the next episode of Myth Force. Oh, Wait, what's happening? Okay. I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. What's going uh, what on? It, it's, of course you're on the edge of your seat. You're playing with us. <laughs> yeah, Silly. You are I want to know what happens. <laughs> you are writing the episode as we do it. This is real time. Will Rico oh, make it out? Okay, okay we so. are. Okay, this is. This looks like. Uh, this looks like the. Is this the boss? Will Hawkins give him a look? Oh, there we go. Oh guy. yeah, look up, look up. Uh, is the guy? Where is it? Looks friendly. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Can you shoot an ice arrow? Just to be sure. Do no. not waste them on him. <laughs> I already did. He just opened up this gate. Let's see where treasures lie within. Oh, okay. 
All right, surely this doesn't look like something bad. This but. isn't a trap. This is not a trap at all. It's okay. a trap. Well, I'm gonna oh, send the bird. Mushroom, guys, okay, get it. Come okay, on, guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm where, sending on my bird, so that can. Oh, everyone left. Oh my god. Right, don't no, worry. I'm right got, here. I'm I got the. I'm, I'm I've got the my, uh, power. I'm gonna drop my dome in the middle here. Yeah. Oh, I got. Oh, I got a bunch with my with my. Uh, Distract oh. them from behind. Work. It did. It did. Okay. Okay, wait. All right, get there's him. the dome here if you need it. Oh, oh God! Here we go. Here we go. Here right we go. Nice, good job. Good, 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 right, good. Keep good, pushing. Good, keep good, pushing. Good, good. All right, Akeem, what's your what's your what's your ultimate ability? What are you what are you what are you I, okay, using right I'm now? I'm hitting them with uh, my. I'm gonna use Ooh, I'm gonna him. use I don't know my spectral detour. Guys, maybe the phantom shot. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh wait, wait. Ah, what is this marking oh. on me? Look at that. Look, I kill. Look, one hit kill. Okay. Right, keep in mind, all we have to do is really just survive the horde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got right. this. We got this. Look. Oh wait, I got my ice arrows I back. Doing a good job. Nice. Hope you guys like frozen. Are you still in that room with the mushrooms? Wait, oh, you guys oh, left? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm down. Oh, I just oh, barely made it out of there. You okay. guys left me for dead in the Oh, these mushrooms just keep on spawning. Oh, no. All right, I know, I'll, I'll, I'll save you when I have a chance. I'm just, I'm just running around, guys. save you when you have a chance? <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> I, there's a lot of mushrooms out here, man. I am down now. Come on. Oh, I'm also down. Oh, they're oh. mages, no, no, too. No, 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 no. We got to make it. We got to make Stella, it. Stella, you have to Stella, survive. You. I'm trying. Oh, no. Stella, careful. There are people behind you. I okay. know. They're There's not one thing people. I know. Wait, why are there skeletons now, too? Wait, yeah, yeah, don't Yeah, careful. Just, oh, uh -oh. No. Yeah, the guy's just that much room. Out of mana. 35 more seconds. 35 more seconds. That's all you have to do. survive yeah, yeah. this. Keep keep running. There's people survive. behind you. Yeah, we literally should have just been running around. I'm trying. Stop yelling at me. Stella, Stella, careful. Oh, my God. Oh, got this. You got this. Yeah, break line of sight. There you I'm go. Going, I'm going. I'm going. We can see you from a oh third God. person okay. view. So we can tell you if someone's coming up from behind you. Okay, okay. Right now you're fine. There's somebody behind? Right now you're fine. Behind. Oh, you got to break line of sight. Break line of sight. I'm going. I'm going. Got 10 seconds. Nice. Good job. 10 seconds. 10 more seconds. Ten Come seconds. on, Stella. You got this. Ah, Eight. Eight. You're good. Six. No pressure. Five. Fine. Four. Easy. Three. Three. Two. Okay, yeah, you got this. You got One. this. No, oh, yeah. Oh, she made it. I'm yeah. sorry, what? <laughs> okay, come so you on. You have to fight the enemy. So you're probably <laughs> going to have to. That's the biggest bait. This is oh, a come on, twist. It's ah. a plot twist on the cartoon game. Woo. I think yeah, I, I think you got two more. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, got three yeah, more. Just, it's just destroy the one enemy. Yeah, destroy the enemy. Exactly. Foolish mortal, you can't destroy me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit too much like another saying. character from another cartoon. It does? Which good? one? Yeah, I, I can't say it. Was all I can't all? say it, but that's okay. That was all of them. I think yeah, we're dead, though. I can't. Right. Right. Do we now we revive, revive us all now. Do not move Where? or revive us. Don't. Oh, if you go over there to that to the left side, once you get past this area, you should be able to revive us to that purple stem. Up here? Yeah, if you see over there on the left side. Oh. Oh, that's what this is. Wait, that's how, okay. Yes, okay. We didn't know what that there did before cool. because we were too good. Yay! Yeah, we never had we never died. died. Yeah. Well, wow. Turns out I carried y'all. Uh, oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Technically, you exactly. revived us. So now uh, every. Oh, who was the only one to survive that? Uh, well, you. but I was kiting all the damage. When you Wait, look. I was soaking look, up. Here's oh, the skeleton okay. guy from the beginning of the game. <laughs> I have to. I have to spend five thousand gold to, for him to be my friend. So yeah. you can you can upgrade your your items here. Oh, oh. Cool. How much or get some new perks. We really did a great job that last battle, by the yeah, way. Yeah, did. yeah, we all four of us did together. Definitely yeah. all survived. It that. was everybody yeah. that, that. It's did. called teamwork. Everyone yeah. joined that, and it wasn't a one person. Oh we yeah. Died so we could survive. We can we can yeah. keep going after this too. We did it. <laughs> we, we did, did it. First yeah. 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 Holy moly. Yeah. That was. All right, so I'm, I think we need. Are are y'all done shopping? I mean, I didn't buy it. I'm just window okay. shopping. Right yeah, now. I have no okay, idea. Okay, okay. Yeah. So we need everyone here, okay. and then All right, we can I'm, go. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah. Right, there we go. What are we looking at? Oh, gates open? Okay. Whoa! Oh, yes! Oh, cool. Whoa, geez. Okay. Ah, so we can either stay in the, the dungeon and continue further down, or we can retreat and basically get our rewards that we've gotten. Ooh. Retreat. So I yeah. want to yeah. get my I wanna rewards. Get a, yeah. we shouldn't, you want to fight another day? Let's see what the. Let's do it. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll I just want to see what the reward is. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. Yeah. I, and then obviously we can always come back in. Yeah. Yeah. I know the ropes now. Yeah, yeah. This is, yeah. We're playing this from our apartment, so we can just play this one. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see stats. I want to know who got the most uh, the most damage. We, we did it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can skip past that part. Yeah. Of Ooh, most damage the... dealt. Oh, is that me, Stella? <laughs> wow. Did okay. I carry the team? Wow. wow. Right. I mean, oh, I was only behind by 500. You, you did have the most kills, though. I will I give you that. Yeah. Kills. I oh my God, me. I had 52 kills. That's pretty good. That is. A I mean, lot I was I was our guardian though. I was our guardian. That's true. That's true. Jeffrey had nine kills. Okay, but I think. Hear me out. It's because <laughs> I was dead the whole time. Moral of the story, everyone pulled their weight and Jeffrey you know was what? also there. This, yeah. is, this is fun. This was I fun. I did deal more damage but, than Akeem, and that's all I No, 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 but I was, was the guardian. That's all that really matters. Yeah, but, you know, I
right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you guys had fun. Yeah, yeah. Had fun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You like the game? I yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, great. It's great. Cool. You definitely <laughs> really fun, like, co-op for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like multiplayer. Yeah. Well, I personally can't wait to play more. And you can play this game, too, because it's going to come out on Xbox this fall. And that just about wraps us up here at IGN. It's been such a pleasure presenting all the amazing games shown off at this year's ID at Xbox Showcase. Thank you to everyone who tuned in today, and thank you to our friends at Xbox for empowering the next generation of indie game developers to create the games of their dreams. We'll see you next time. This broadcast is brought to you by the Xfinity 10G Network. Get a game-changing connection today for a faster, more reliable tomorrow. The future starts now. Welcome back to IGN Live at San Diego Comic-Con. The biggest pop culture celebration on Earth once again descends on San Diego. And if you can't be there in person, IGN Live is the next best thing. It's going to be great. Join us for first looks and new trailers from the most anticipated movies, shows, games, and plenty of comics, collectibles, cosplay, and more along the way. We're trying to follow along the best we can and relay that information to you. And it all starts July 21st. Cinefix Top 100, a list so secretive even we don't know what movies are on it or where they rank. What do you mean you don't know? Each episode will reveal one of the movies. Did I rush it? Felt like I rushed it. was good. I liked it. Talk about why it belongs and finally find out where it ranks. Are you not entertained? Are any of the movies we've shown here even on the list? I have no idea and it drives me crazy. <laughs> Join us as we find out on the Cinefix Top 100, Mondays starting July 3rd. Why so serious? Welcome to Super Debatable. When you got big takes on superheroes as hot as ours, well, you need a place to vent them. And that's exactly what we'll be doing week after week on Super Debatable, arguing over the most divisive topics facing fans. The MCU, that multiversal mess peaked years ago. It's all downhill from here. James Gunn and Peter Safran should absolutely nuke the Snyderverse. Yeah. We could argue about this all day. And we will. Join us on Super Debatable Fridays on IGN.